Um, so my name is Emily Morris and I'm um, a genetic counseling student at UBC and today I'll be presenting my thesis project for the program. Um, the title of my project is Medical Geneticist Discussion of Psychiatric Risks During Diagnosis of 22Q11.2 Deletion Syndrome. So what is 22Q11.2 deletion syndrome? Essentially, it refers to a missing piece of chromosome 22. So humans have 46 chromosomes that contain all our genes, and people with 22Q11.2 deletion syndrome are missing a small piece of one of their chromosome 22s, and it's a small piece that's missing from the Q arm of the chromosome. Uh, so the purpose of today is to talk about rare diseases, um, and 22Q deletion syndrome is a rare disease. Um, the incidence is about 1 in 4,000, but actually it's one of the more common rare diseases and is actually the more, most common um, micro or small deletion syndrome that occurs in humans. Um, and it can go by actually many different names. You may have heard it referred to as DeGeorge syndrome, fellow cardiofacial syndrome, conotruncal anomaly face syndrome. Um, and there's other um, names that it also goes by, but those are some of the more common ones. Individuals with 22Q deletion syndrome can present with a range of clinical features and symptoms, um, but some of the most common features that they present with are learning disabilities. Uh, many are born with a heart defect. Many will have immune deficiencies. Many will have a palate abnormality, or basically a difference in the way the roof of their mouth forms early on in development. About half will have calcium deficiencies. Um, and in 30% will develop mental illness. And this includes mental illnesses such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and schizoaffective disorder. And in the general population, um, these psychiatric conditions affect about 3% of the population. So people with 22Q deletion syndrome are at an increased risk for these conditions. Um, so previous research with families that have a child with 22Q deletion syndrome um, asked families to rank which of all the features that these children present with causes them the most worry or the most anxiety, since there are so many different symptoms these children can have. And parents ranked that um, concerns about mental illness caused the most anxiety for them compared to the many other features of the syndrome. And they reported that they were not told about the risk for mental illness by healthcare professionals. Um, medical geneticists being the healthcare professional that most often make the diagnosis and are providing them with information about the condition. Um, and that medical geneticists were not talking about the risk for mental illness with them. And the majority of parents reported that they were receiving information about mental illness from the internet. So the purpose of my study was to get the medical geneticist perspective. Since we had that parent's perspective, I wanted to find out what the medical geneticist's thoughts were. So basically, I wanted to find out how often geneticists uh, discuss mental illness uh, with families, uh, when do they discuss mental illness, um, and, and, the, and are there any correlations between discussing mental illness and attitudes towards mental illness, because studies have shown that mental illness um, has many negative attitudes associated with it. So I wanted to see if there was any um, correlation with negative attitudes towards mental illness that influence how often geneticists are discussing this with families. So to do this, I sent a questionnaire to medical geneticists in the United States and Canada. Um, to a total of 546 geneticists, and they could complete this questionnaire online or by mail, um, and the majority of respondents actually completed it by mail. Um, and in the questionnaire, I included a question um, that basically asked geneticists to rank if they always, often, sometimes, rarely, or never, discuss each of the following um, symptoms of 22Q, so heart defects, palate defects, calcium deficiencies, immune problems, learning disabilities, and mental illness. And they were asked this question depending on the age of diagnosis that the diagnosis was being made for the, the individual with 22Q. So they were asked it prenatally to one year of age, and then when making the diagnosis when the child is one to 12 years of age, 
and then again when it's 13 to 18 years of age, and then in adulthood, so when the patient is greater than 19 years of age. And I also included um, a questionnaire that was designed to measure healthcare providers' attitudes towards mental illness. Um, basically, it's uh, a questionnaire of 20 statements, and respondents are asked to indicate if they strongly disagree to strongly agree for each of the statements. And I've included three here just to give you a sense of what some of these statements look like. So for example, there is little I can do to help people with mental illness. I struggle to feel compassion for a person with a mental illness. And despite my professional beliefs, I have negative reactions towards people who have mental illness. So those are just three examples from that questionnaire. So in total, I received 309 completed questionnaires. So that was a response rate of about 57%. And on average, the geneticists that completed were practicing about 19.8 years. I had a fairly even split between male and female respondents. Um, the majority of uh, participants were from the United States, with only 16% being from Canada. But this is representative of the distribution between uh, geneticists in Canada and the US. So in terms of the results, um, this uh, graph shows the frequency of discussion on the y-axis. Um, so basically, the higher the number, it indicates more often that that particular feature was discussed with families. And the blue bars uh, represent mental illness, and the orange bar represents um, the other features of 22Q. So we found that um, when the diagnosis was being made prenatally or to less than one year of age and one to 12 years of age, that medical geneticists were discussing um, mental illness significantly less often than the other features of 22Q. Um, however, when the uh, uh, patient being diagnosed was older, uh, 13 to 18 years or in adulthood, um, geneticists were discussing mental illness significantly more often than the other features of 22Q. Um, and our results in terms of looking at negative attitudes are shown here. So on the y-axis, we have the negative attitudes towards mental illness score. So basically, the higher the, the number, the more negative the attitudes were towards mental illness. Um, and the blue represents geneticists who rarely or never discuss, and the orange being those who always, often, or sometimes discuss mental illness. And so we found that the geneticists that rarely or never discuss mental illness with patients um, have significantly more negative attitudes towards mental illness. So sort of in conclusion from our results, we determined that geneticists are discussing mental illness um, more often than other features uh, when the child is less than 12 years of age, um, but less uh, and more often when the child is in adolescence or adulthood. Um, and when we think about when the diagnoses are most often made for these individuals, it's most often made when it, the child is in early childhood or infancy. And in fact, um, there's some um, studies looking at potentially including 22Q in newborn screening. So that would mean uh, individuals would be diagnosed shortly after birth. Um, so if geneticists or people making the diagnosis and giving information to families are not sharing with them at that time of diagnosis, then it would be important for these individuals to be followed up with later on. Um, However, there's a chance that perhaps these patients are falling through the cracks and they're not actually being followed up with. So it would be interesting to explore studies to see how often patients with 22Q are followed up with in adolescence and adulthood and if the chance for mental illness is being discussed. Um, and this is important because uh, mental illness is a treatable condition. Um, 
symptoms such as psychosis can be treated both with medication um, and with other interventions. And there's been studies that have shown that there's actually an underutilization of mental health treatments and services by patients with 22Q compared to patients who don't. And this may be due to lack of awareness both on the part of the families that have these conditions as well as the healthcare professionals that are dealing with them. And our study also showed that uh, negative attitudes may play a role in how often geneticists are discussing mental illness with families. Um, and so potentially there is suggestion to look at interventions that might improve attitudes towards mental illness. Um, a recent study looked at using a documentary about mental illness um, as a way of reducing negative attitudes in a population of healthcare professionals, actually in genetic counselors. So this might be something to explore with geneticists as well. Um, so I'd like to acknowledge the UBC Genetic Counseling Program and um, the people that helped with envelope stuffing for all those surveys that I sent out, mm -hmm. as well as my tax and, of course, the Rare Disease Foundation, which provided me with a microgrant that covered the mailing costs associated with the study. <laughs>